Welcome back guys, today let's have a look on how this hologram shader can be done in Unity. There's a few tricks going on, we have Fresnel, some scanning lines and a vertex glitch going on. It's a bit more elaborate than your usual hologram shader, so let's have a look on how we can achieve this. By the way, I made it all available on my Patreon's page, links below where you can get access to a huge amount of projects and assets for your games. So let's begin by creating a shader graph with right click. I am on the Universal Render Pipeline and you can choose Lit if you want this to be influenced by the lights of your scene or Unlit if you don't want this to be influenced by the lights. I'm gonna go with Unlit, rename it, double click to open it up and the first node we need, you can search one with spacebar, is the Fresnel effect. It will highlight the curvature of an object in relation to our viewpoint. And the most interesting input it has is the power parameter. We can control how much of that curvature is highlighted. So let's create two parameters, one for the color, the Fresnel color, and the other one for the Fresnel power. A color property and then a float property. With the Fresnel power property selected, let's go to the graph inspector because we want to say its default value is 3. 3, 4, 5, you can test couple of values. For the color, let's turn on HDR for the mode, so we can control its intensity. Let's make sure the default color is white with alpha at 100. If we want the color to influence the Fresnel effect, we multiply these two together. And then we can connect this to the base color, save this asset and if I quickly create a capsule and then a material from the shader we created, and assign that material to the capsule. This is what we get at this point. We can control the Fresnel power and its color. Bluish, something like that. We have two problems. One is completely opaque and the other one, it doesn't look like an hologram yet. So let's take care of the transparency of the opaque. On the graph inspector, if you go to graph settings and change the surface type to transparent, we get this new input on the fragment function and another thing we could turn on is the allow material overwrite. It will essentially allow you to control these parameters directly in the material without opening the shader. Let's just say the alpha clip is zero. And now we can connect this directly to the alpha, save it and we get transparency. Pretty cool, right? The Fresnel effect is always awesome. Let's improve this. Let's turn this into an hologram by creating first a texture 2D for our scan lines texture. Why are we using a texture 2D instead of a procedural noise that comes with shader graph? Because it's much more lightweight than using the procedural noises. Let's sample this texture and we can already add this to the Fresnel and then replace the connections to the base color and to the alpha. If we save this yeah, it will become super bright because we don't have a texture assigned in our material. We want to assign a texture similar to this one. And I'm going to show you how to create one. It's extremely easy. If you go search for Material Maker and then download it, you get this awesome software where with right click we can create a Voronoi node and say the scale X is something like 0 0.1. And here we go. Skylines. We can even increase the scale Y to have more lines. And that's it. If you want, you can drag a line from this first output, search for step, and here you can control the gray scale basically. Something like this will do just fine. All we gotta do is on this preview to the window with right click, select export, and choose the resolution. Then export as a PNG. To your project or to any other folder. Once you have that texture in your project, you can assign it to the scanline texture inside the shader and on the material as well. And the cool thing is that we can control the tiling of this texture by creating a vector 2D. We have scanline tiling. Let's already create another vector 2 for the scanline speed. The tiling needs to have a default value of 1 by 1. 
and then we can use the tiling and offset node where we can connect the tiling, the scanline styling, connect this to the UV of the sample texture. And as you can see the offset controls, well, the offset of the texture. I have shown this so many times on my shader tutorials. But essentially, if we multiply the skyline speed with the time node and connect it to offset, we are able to scroll this. But most importantly now, we can repeat this text on the y-axis to make it look like some scan lines, very common on holograms. And then the speed can be 1 on the y-axis and here we go. Very interesting results we get with just a couple of nodes. Now let me just push this time viral back here because we are going to need it. Create a group for the scan lines. And if we want to make this breathe or flicker, we can use this time variable, multiply it with a certain value and then connect it to the sign node. And if we increase this certain value, the sign will breathe in, breathe out faster. And if we multiply this with our scan lines and then replace this to the add up there, we get a breathing effect that needs a few adjustments. The adjustments are very simple, we just want to use a remap node to say the zeros and ones that come in, you see this is the in value, they are going to go out as 0 0.7 for example, between 0 0.7 and 1. We are remapping the values. The effect we get is a breathing effect. Can make it breathe faster or slower. Cool, right? Let me show you another effect, another trick. If we want this to flicker, instead, we need a texture 2D. A texture is always lighter than the procedural noises. Sample this flicker texture. And strangely enough, connect the time to the UV input and it will mess up the UV so much that it will flicker. Let's just add a texture to this flicker texture. A noise one. By the way, if you have Material Maker, a noise texture can be made in seconds by searching for the FPM noise, adjusting the scale, and then with right click on the preview to the window, export as a PNG, and there you go, you have a noise texture. You can assign it to the flicker texture, and then you can connect this to the remap node. Nothing will happen because we need to assign the flicker texture to the material. Here we go. It may not seem like it's flickering because this remapping value is way too high, the X, let's say it's 0 0.3, and here we go. We have a flicker effect that looks very nice for an hologram. Cool, right? And before we have a look at that vertex glitch, let's create groups for the breathe effect, and this one is for the flicker. For the vertex glitch, if we go up here, we have this vertex function that happens before the fragment function and we have the position input. If we search for position, we can use this one in geometry section. We can control the coordinate space and we want to say it's in relation to the object itself. And the cool thing is that we can add something to each vertex of our mesh. We can already connect this to the position of the vertex. And if I were to increase one of these values, it would offset all of the vertices. Well, we want to do this randomly to each vertex and we already have most of the things we need with the scan lines and with the flicker effect. We just need to pick this position and multiply it with that. But here's the thing. If we were to connect this sample text of the scan lines, we couldn't. We weren't able to. This multiply becomes grayed out. That's because the sample text 2D is unavailable in this shader stage, so we want to use a sample text 2D LOD, which is useful for sampling a texture in the vertex shader stage. You can use the same texture and the same UV modifications. But we still want to multiply this with the flicker effect. But let's first connect this right here, since now we are able to. And let's see what happens if we save this shader. Our capsules vertices go crazy, because this is too intense. So we can control that intensity with a lerp node right here, where the A option is going to be 
for the vertex without modifications and the B options is with modifications. And the T input is how much of A or B we want to interpolate. This is where we can create a float called vertex offset with a default value, with a very small default value of 0 0.05, for example, connect it to the T, connect the lerp to the position, save it, and here we go. We are starting to see something. If you are good with that, you can stop right here, but I still think it will look much better if it responds correctly to the flicker or to the breathe effect. So let's connect it to this multiply. But as you can see, it's also a sample text to 2D. We could have replaced this with an LOD, but we can also sample it again. Let me make some room. Connect the flicker texture property. The time to the UV, so it is synchronized with the flicker down there. And we can copy this remap node. Ctrl C, Ctrl V, replace the connection. Connect to the multiply. And that's it. If we save, we get a different feeling, which in my opinion looks better because it is synchronized with the flicker, with the intensity of the flicker. So, there you have it a more refined hologram effect for your games. And if you apply this to a character, it looked pretty cool. Mine came out a little bit different because I've tweaked the values, refined it, and then made all of these variations, which they are all available on my Patreon's page. The link's below, and if you want to support me, you get access to a huge library of visual effects for your games and assets, and I want to say thank you to each patron that supported me last month, and as usual, a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are Alberto Sageras, Alan Alsta, David Molina, Diego Marcos, Lua Ama, Frosty40, God Ava, Goobles, Grub Lab, Ivan Jacubi, Ginuga4, Casey Miller, Song Kyo, Leandro Di Risi, Leon Holt, Mark Annan, Matt Moran, Michael Maganinho, Mike Bell, Oitsk, Ozum, Safale, Phil Kozel, Pierre Mario Roux, Pradip Sen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Sanofer, Sean Aguilar, The Static Samurai, Travis Connolly, Verisada, Whatever Marta, Will Poilin, Vlad, and Min J Kim. So thank you all for watching, I hope you have enjoyed, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you, bye.